Hello everyone, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Monique Robert. I am a Senior Assistant Director of Admissions with Boston University. Uh, and so this evening, I'm going to start by providing you with an overview of the university, um, talking about the application process. And then Laura from BU Athletics will be talking more about our varsity teams and the recruitment process. Um, but Laura, would you please start by introducing yourself and, and more of your background with BU? Definitely. Thanks, Monique. Um, my name is Laura Flaherty. I'm the Assistant Director for Compliance in the Athletics Department at Boston University. I've been in this current role uh, for six for the, for the past six past for the past six years, eight years overall uh, at BU. Uh, and within my role in the Compliance Office, I serve as a resource for our Athletics Department um, in regards to our NSA rules and regulations and how everyone is impacted by them. Thank you, Laura. So very knowledgeable about all the ins and outs and, and background of, um, you know, when a student athlete applies to BU and the recruitment process, everything that you need to submit. Um, and then, you know, after you enroll, kind of getting you here and, and settling you in. And then, you know, we have the, all the support services as well after, after you come. So um, let's start though by talking about kind of BU from the beginning, um, from the overview um, of the university. We'll talk more about, you know, common application and the application process. Um, and then Laura will provide you with all of these um, awesome details about our, our varsity teams. Um, so again, my name is Monique. I I am um, on the Board of Admissions. I you know, primarily review applications coming from Canada. So um, there's a great chance that I will be the one reviewing your, your application when it comes to BU. Um, and so I really want to share my insight with you um, about the university and our process. I've been with BU Admissions for about 12 years now. Um, I'm also an alum of the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, and so, you know, I could talk forever about the university, but I really want to just kind of share um, some of the main highlights with you and then we'll talk about um, the application process. So Boston University is a um, large private and teaching research institution in the heart of the city of Boston with ample ap academic opportunities um, in the liberal arts and the professions, um, as well as extracurricular opportunities in study abroad, internships, and research. Um, our students are diverse and really revel in that diversity, um, really becoming this vibrant community on, on campus. So we are located, as I said, in the heart of the city of Boston. So you can see to the right of your screen, these two spires, which are on the top of the College of Arts and Sciences. And really almost this entire, um, you know, middle to low section of the right-hand screen is Boston University's campus. We have our own neighborhood in Boston. So keep your eyes on that spire, those spires for a second, and we're just gonna pivot right around them. Um, so now we're looking at campus and again out towards downtown Boston. So you're looking at the College of Arts and Sciences, which is one of the main 10 schools and colleges on our campus. All of the schools and colleges are located along a one and a half kilometer stretch of Commonwealth Avenue, um, which is the main thoroughfare that our um, all of our buildings are centrally located around. So we're not spread out across the city of Boston. Everything is clustered together right around the Ave. And you can see the trolley tracks that run right through Commonwealth Avenue. Um, we call it the T. Um, it's the MBTA public transportation. Um, and so you can jump on the T, the trolley, uh, and it'll take you right to downtown Boston in just a couple of stops. So we are very well into integrated into our urban environment, but we are a residential campus. Um, so all of our first year students are required to live on campus their first year, and we guarantee housing for all four years, which is a great option um, when you're in a big urban city like Boston. Um, so all of the schools and colleges, as I mentioned, are right on our Charles River campus. They offer over 300 different programs of study. Um, and students can take a minor concentration outside of their major degree program across the different divisions. Um, we're really 
well known for our academic flexibility, really giving students an abundance of choice because we find, given the diversity of our students, that they are interested in a wide variety of academic areas. Our students come from all 50 states and over 100 countries. We're 24% in international in our undergraduate class of over 16,000 undergraduate students. Um, so our students come from a wide variety of backgrounds, from cultural, religious, socioeconomic, um, political backgrounds. And they are very academically curious as well and want to really explore a wide variety of areas. Um, so. When you come to BU, you'll apply to one specific school or college, and if you know what you'd like to study, a major within that program. Um, so if you know that you would like to study finance in the Questrom School of Business, you apply directly to finance. If you want, know that you want to study advertising in the College of Communication, you apply directly to that, or English, or um, hospitality, or education. You have a wide variety. If you know specifically that you want to go into that program, that's what you put on your application. Um, but we know that not everyone has made up their mind just yet, so we do have an undeclared option as well. About 30% of our students enroll undeclared, um, so maybe you have no clue what you'd like to study at university, maybe you're choosing between just way too many things to put one on your application, so you can enroll undeclared. Um, it's really popular with our students, about 30% of our students enroll undeclared, um, and so you are able to dabble and, and try on different programs, and then the end of your second year you declare your major previously from there you probably satisfied most of the general education requirements as you're dabbling along um, so then you're able to focus your last two years in the requirements specific to your major so changing trying on different things isn't going to add any more time to your four-year degree um, actually about 80 percent of BU students change their major at least once before they graduate um, just really showing how easy it is it is to change your major um, but we want students to explore so again you can have a minor concentration outside of your major we also allow for dual or double degrees so if you wanted to pursue two bachelor bachelor's degrees simultaneously you can combine them in a way that you're able to complete both um, within the traditional four years. Um, you'll have a professional academic advisor for each major or minor that you declare, uh, and they'll help guide you along your academic pathway. Um, but of course, your faculty are going to be an amazing resource for you along the way too. Um, BU, even though we are a fairly large school, our student to, our student to faculty ratio is still very small at only only 10 to 1. Um, so if you are used to the, those small class sizes, you can still expect that at a larger institution like BU. Um, our average class size is just 27 students. In fact, about 80% of your classes are going to be 27 or smaller. Only about 4% of your classes are going to be those larger lectures. So yes, every university student has some lectures that they'll go to, um, especially in their first few years, like Economics 101 is one of the bigger ones. Biology 101, pretty big. Um, but if you have those lectures that are 150 students, they must be paired with smaller discussion sessions that are capped at 25 students, um, where you learn no additional information. You're recapping what you went over in lecture um, with a professor or a teaching fellow um, and really able to, to grasp that information um, beyond the, the lecture. And then, of course, all of the faculty are required to have office hours. Um, we really encourage you to go to the office office hours, not just to talk to your next paper or project, um, but also just what you're interested in studying, what you think your future profession might be. Your faculty member might have an insight into that. Or maybe just what living in Boston is like if you haven't ever lived in a big city. They want to share those experiences for you, become your, your kind of second family on campus, a support network that you can really uh, lean into um, when you're exploring everything that you have on campus. Um, so your faculty members are also very much involved in research as well. Um, BU is a major research institution. We are a member of the American Association of U Universities, the AAU, which is a group of 65 schools across the US and Canada that really have this commitment to research, not just on the graduate level, but on the undergraduate level as well. Um, so many of our courses have research built into them where you will write those longer research papers um, as part of those classes. Many of our 
faculty, though, are involved in their own research projects and they need volunteers to help them get that work done. And they'll look very much to um, undergraduate students as well um, to assisting them with those those research projects. But we also have a student driven research program called the undergraduate under the undergraduate research opportunities program or Europe. Um, so this student driven program is where you come up with a project on your own. Um, your own idea, this burning question that you've always wanted to answer. You have a faculty from your division or another one, it can be cross interdisciplinary, um, sign on to mentor you and then we will fund you. So we'll fund any materials that you need, any travel, anywhere that you need to go to look into these projects, um, but also, um, you know, paying you like a stipend. Um, so we'll pay you like a part time job to do this research, whether tinkering away in the lab or um, reading multiple as numerous books in the library on your favorite subject. Um, it can be in the humanities or liberal arts, you know, and even as a varsity athlete, you'd think that you don't have much time to do these other things. Um, but our athletes are student athletes and they still have this academic curiosity and want to be involved in research as well. Um, so there's many ways that they can, you know, any student can fit research into their degree at BU. We want you to get that professional experience, get your hands dirty, really see what it's like to be um, a professional in that field before you even get into it so that you know that this is something that is really meant for you to do and you can commit all of your passions to, to doing that. Um, we want students to experience their profession, of course, through internships as well. We don't call it co-op in at Boston University. Co-op um, typically applies to something that you do outside of your degree program. We call it internships. And so our internships, students are able to do right alongside their academic classes. So as a university student, you get to decide your own schedule. If you are not, a, you know, a, you know, if you are a morning person, you're not really looking for late night classes, you can schedule all of your classes in the morning done by a reasonable time in the afternoon and then jump on the T, go downtown a couple of stops, work for your internship for a few hours in the afternoon and then come back to campus um, for, for studying in the evening. You can do those hours right alongside of your academics. Maybe you schedule every Tuesday free and that's when you go down and do your internships. Um, so you're really able to mesh that into your schedule because of our proximity within this larger urban environment um, and because many of our programs have internships built into them. If you're in the Questrom School of Business, um, the Wheelock School of Education, the School of Hospitality Administration, internships are actually a part of your degree program. 94% um, of our students will complete at least one internship before they graduate, either in Boston, um, perhaps even somewhere locally at home while they're home for the summers, but also um, abroad. We have a very robust study abroad program um, that includes over 80 programs in 20 cities worldwide and over 4,000 internship opportunities. So not only can you study while you study abroad and take some classes academically. You can do language immersion, the tra traditional living with a host family, but you can also add an internship component to your study abroad. Um, so perhaps you take classes for the first couple of months and then you work full time um, for that position for the last half of the semester while you're overseas. Um, students have worked for film companies in Sydney, Australia. They've worked for the World Health Organization in Ghana, Parliament in London, pop-up clinics in Belize. Um, actually, the study abroad website has what your major is, where you want to go and what you want to do. And then it funnels out this neat little list of all of your different options um, for anywhere that you would like to go. Um, we actually have one of the oldest study abroad programs in the US. Our international reciprocity goes back to the 1870s. We're one of the first schools um, to have an international exchange program and ask students to really look beyond the shores of Boston for their education. Um, so this global theme is something that is, is certainly a pillar to um, the education um, and curriculum at BU. 
Um, and so students will do, you know, these opportunities, again, this global theme kind of running through um, their time at BU, but even after they graduate, we have a very large alumni network of over 300,000 living alumni. Um, they are in 189 countries, literally all over the world. Um, so not only do you have this social network where no matter where you are, you can reach out to fellow terriers to get together, but also this professional network um, that you're able to lean into for support while you're you know an undergraduate and for a lifetime afterwards and so when students really do um, you know immerse themselves in in BU we find that they have great success um, about you know I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned um, that 94% of our students are within a professional position um, within six months of graduating from BU. Um, so they are, you know, certainly finding the success rate after graduation. We're number 18 for the most employable um, gra graduates within the U.S. Um, by the Times Higher Ed. We have the Center for Career Development that is really looking um, to build your resume and cover letters. Like from the first time that you step onto campus, they're going to help you through that process. They'll invite employers to campus for career fairs, over 600 a year, different webinars and seminars, um, and really make sure that you're able to have those experiences early on to find that success um, after after you graduate. So in terms of getting here and starting your career with BU, um, you will first need to submit your um, application and go through the application review process. So I am now gearing up for that personally. In the next couple of weeks, um, we will start to review our first set of applications. Um, so to take you through all of the component parts here and kind of give you some tips on how to stand out within this process. So all applicants to BU will submit the common application or the coalition application. Um, when you are a recruited athlete, you will be working with your coach, with a coach at BU to complete this entire process, but the component parts are still the same for every student. So let's just go through them for a second. Um, so the common application is much more widespread. It's the, the, the older of the two, the coalition application is newer, but within each one of them, you will put in your guidance, count, guidance counselor and teacher's contact information. So you will include their email addresses. Those websites will email your counselor and teacher the instructions for uploading their letter um, and then for your counselor to also upload your transcript. So all of that can come right through um, the Common Application website or another platform like Naviance um, and all be done electronically. When you apply, you'll submit a transcript for grades 9, 10, and 11. And then after your first marking period, whether it's your first trimester or first semester, first quarter, um, your guidance counselor will send in the mid-year report that has your updated grades. Um, so even after your application deadline passes, we'll still want that update to your application so we have the most um, recent grading information. You'll also, through those application websites, submit your essays. You'll submit um, kind of the longer um, topic of your choice essay and then the shorter Why Boston University essay. Um, so you have at least two to submit for any application. Um, for the YBU essay, I would just recommend, um, you know, taking a moment, going onto our website, picking out some particular specific details to BU, um, and putting those keywords into your essay to really make it very specific to Boston University. Um, there are 60 institutions in a six mile radius of Boston. Um, so if you just want to go to school in Boston um, because you like, you know, revolutionary history and you're a hockey fan, um, you know, you can really get that experience from anywhere in, in the city. But why particularly do you want to go to BU? If you're a recruited athlete, that's a great reason, but also, um, you know, what do you, else do you hope to do while you're at BU? Is there a major perhaps that you're interested in, a faculty member that you want to study with, um, just a place on campus that you look forward to hanging out on? Um, it helps us as the Board of Admissions really picture you in that role um, to really picture you as a member of the BU community. 
So do take a moment with your, your essays and do that research um, for each individual school's specific essay. Um, then if you are applying to the College of Fine Arts, not so common for an athlete, but it still could happen. Um, just note that you would need a portfolio, an audition, um, you know, a portfolio or an audition for your application to theater, music, or, um, or the visual arts. If you're applying early decision, there'll be an early decision agreement to, to fill out. Um, and so that is a binding option. We don't have early action, which is not binding. We just have early decision. Um, we have two rounds of it though, early decision one and two and then regular decision. Um, students apply early decision to schools if it's their top choice, your number one choice, you really just do not wanna go anywhere else. You're ready to commit now to that top choice school. Um, those are the ones that you apply early decision to. Um, and it really is a great way to stand out in that small applicant pool. Um, then if you're an international student, a non-US citizen or permanent resident, we would also ask for the confidential statement of financing studies um, just as part to, as your, of your international student application so that we can create your um, visa documentation later on um, after you enroll. Uh, those are all kind of the basic component parts of your application I'll touch on. Um, some more in just a little moment. Um, but one thing that I really want to make sure that I highlight here um, is standardized testing. So for students applying to, um, so for your grade 12 students who are started, who are applying to start in the fall 2021 semester, um, BU is test optional. And we really, really mean that. So you have the decision whether or not you want to submit SAT or ACT scores. On the common application, you'll select whether or not you're planning on sending in your scores. If you do send them to us, they will absolutely be reviewed as part of your application but you get to decide whether or not um, you want to send them. So um, any student, including athletes to apply for the fall 2021 semester, um, we are test optional. So if you do not want to send in your SAT scores, your ACT scores, you are not required to. You're not required to for application to any major or any scholarship, um, any of the merit-based scholarships even that we offer. There's a full tuition trustee scholarship, a $25,000 presidential scholarship. Both of those do not require um, SAT or ACT scores. When you're thinking about whether or not you want to send your test scores in, and I know a lot of schools are test optional this year, um, and we're really doing that for your benefit, right? I mean, we know that testing centers were closed, that exam dates were suddenly canceled, that you didn't have the time to prepare, maybe you had to sign up for another exam on the fly, um, and you just were not happy with your results. Um, you know, we are understanding that. So that's why we're giving you this option as in you're thinking whether or not you want to send them think about the profile for the admitted students for last year. Um, so I have that on the screen here for our admitted students last year for, for all students and we have an incoming class size of 3,100 students. Um, the average in the middle 50% SAT range was between a 1420 and a 1540. Um, the ACT range was between a 32 and a 35 and this is for you know all students who were admitted to the university this past year. So thinking about whether or not you want to send your scores in, think about those ranges for last year's students as well. Um, but also think about whether or not they're a good reflection of your academic abilities. If you think that your grades and the courses that you've taken really are the better reflection of your academic aptitude um, and you're not so happy with your test scores, you now have the option of not having to send in those SAT scores. Um, the other exams though that we do ask for are English proficiency exams. So if English is not your native language, so if English is not the language spoke, uh, spoken in your home or the first language taught to you as a baby, um, then you would want to send in a test of English language proficiency, um, either the TOEFL, the IELTS, or the Duolingo English test, the DET. Um, Duolingo is a really quick option. So if you haven't taken the exams yet this year and you want to add an English exam to your application, Duolingo is a great option because it can be sent to us within three days of you taking the, um, taking the test. So it's very quick. You can take it from anywhere. There's no specific test dates. You do it from home. Um, so that can be a way to add a test to your application if you need to. 
In terms of what we're looking for overall in your application, this is a common question. What's the most important part of my application? Um, you are applying for an academic position at university. Um, you're applying to study for a bachelor's degree. Even if you are an athlete, you're a student athlete, and at the end, you're going to walk away from BU with your diploma in your bachelor's degree. So your academics are going to be first and foremost in our review of your admissibility to the university. Um, we're going to look at not only, you know, not just, of course, your cumulative GPA, um, that overall average grade point, but each individual course that you've taken throughout high school, how many courses you have in each subject area. Um, we are a liberal arts based school, so we like to see a well rounded curriculum. Um, so kind of touching on the five main subject, five main core academic subject areas, English, history or social science, um, laboratory science, uh, math and foreign language. Um, so we look for students that have strong foundations there because they'll um, need those skills later when they come to BU and include those subjects in their general education of their degree. So we look for that well-rounded curriculum, but then we also look for students who are challenging themselves in that curriculum. BU is a selective school, so we do like to see that if you have um, honors or AP or international baccalaureate courses available to you, um, that you explore those courses and that you challenge yourself with those courses. Now that's only if it's available to you. If your school does not offer AP, if your school does not offer the international baccalaureate, of course we cannot expect you um, to have taken those classes, but we can expect you um, to really take advantage and make the most of everything that your school environment does offer. Every student is really evaluated within the context of um, the school from which they apply. So in addition to um, your academics, we're also building a community at BU. Um, we want students who are not only going to thrive academically, but who are also going to immerse themselves in our community, um, who are going to contribute and be impactful and um, you know, have a positive um, interaction with the, the students on, and faculty and staff on campus. So we'll also review your recommendations, um, how you conduct yourself at your school, how you conduct yourself within your community. Um, we look at your extracurricular activities. Um, there's no hierarchy of, of activities, it's not that one is better than another, but we're looking for your passions and your motivations. We want to see that there is something that you care very deeply about and that you really devote your time to, that you commit yourself to those things that you care deeply about. Um, and so that's what we're looking for in your application, um, in your extracurricular activities. Um, and then of course is your writing sample. We want to know more about those passions and motivations um, and really your character as well. Um, and so that will come through to us on your writing samples in a way that can't come from any other part of your application. So. As you are deciding um, you know, what type of application to submit, um, again, you'll have the choice between early decision, early decision two, or regular decision. On your application, you select your type of application, early decision or regular decision, um, and then you submit it at the appropriate time for um, you know, what you would like to be considered for. So we have here the December 1st deadline for merit scholarships. So if you want to apply for a merit scholarship, you select either early decision one or two or regular decision, and then submit your application in by December 1st to be considered for these academic merit awards. Um, so first we'll you know, admit students and then all of the top students who've applied for a merit scholarship will then be considered for those awards. Um, students who are typically in the top 10% of their class are um, competitive for the presidential scholarship, which is $25,000 a year US for four years. Um, and then the trustee scholarship is full tuition and fees for four years. Um, there is an extra essay component on the application. You'll select yes on the BU member page to apply to the trustee scholarship. An additional essay section will open up and you'll submit your essay for um, the trustee scholarship. There is a faculty review component um, for the trustee awards. Um, and those, um, you know, 
that so that review process is a lot of, is a little bit more comprehensive, um, but you'll select either type of application, then just submit it by December 1st to be considered for those scholarships. Um, and so early decision one, the deadline is November 1st. You'll have your decision back by December 15th. Early decision two, the deadline is January 5th. January 1st, you'll have your decision back by mid-February. And just a note with early decision. So last year we enrolled 46% of our class out of early decision one and one or two. Um, we had over 60,000 students apply for admission to this year's um, first year class. Our first year class size is 3,100 students and about half of them were enrolled through early decision. So you'll actually work with your coach too on um, what is going to be the best type of application for you to submit, whether early decision or regular decision, um, your coach will give you um, that insight again, and you'll work very closely with them on all of these various component parts um, when applying to BU. So at this point, I am going to um, pass the baton to Laura to speak more about our wonderful athletics department, our varsity sports teams, and the recruiting process. Um, our claim to fame is probably our, um, you know, men's varsity ice hockey team our women's ice hockey team though have hold a special place in my heart for their recent um, showing in the winter olympics uh, many of you alums on on that team but laura will give you more um, inside scoop about our players um, and how they they get to be you um uh, thanks monique uh, a lot of valuable information about BU and about the admissions process. Um, and like I said at the beginning, um, I've been in my role uh, for the past six years um, and eight years overall at Boston University. Uh, within my role, um, again, I serve as a resource for our athletics department. I just wanna go into just what I, what I do. And so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here to provide a, prom, a positive experience and also to provide guidance to student athletes, our coaches, our athletic staff, our student athlete parents, and to our BU community. The purpose of this is to ultimately promote and protect our teams, the athletics department, and the university because we have NCA rules to follow and to keep track of. The compliance office uh, is responsible for informing student athletes and coaches and staff in our BU community of the NCA rules and regulations that impact them. So to go into uh, the athletics department, uh, the athletics department serves as a source of spirit and pride for the campus with roughly 600 student athletes competing at the highest level of college athletics in 24, 24 NCAA Division I varsity sports. We have been a member of the Patriot League Conference since 2013 with 20 of our 24 programs competing under the Patriot League banner while the men's and women's ice hockey teams are in the Hockey East Association in the men's rowing and women's lightweight rowing uh, programs compete annually within the Intercollegiate Rowing Association. Uh, next slide, if you don't mind. Academic support. So just like other member schools, we support our student athletes academic success by providing tutoring and access to academic advisors. Uh, furthermore, uh, our student services, uh, support services uh, provides a comprehensive program that supports all student athletes in their overall personal development and in their pursuit of academic and athletic goals. Uh, we are committed to our student athletes development in that uh, we are committed to our student athletes development in five major areas. Um, academic excellence, athletic excellence, career development, personal development and community service. The various components of our academic support program are designed to recognize and respond to the unique demands um, faced by student athletes in these areas. Um, so we offer academic services such as tutoring and study hall, as well as developmental, developmental programming on topics of particular importance to the student athletes. Next slide. Next slide, sorry. And 
sorry, Laura. I just also want to add in yeah. um, just in terms of, of support for both our student athletes, but for all of our students um, with the Educational Resource Center. Um, and I know athletes have other additional tutoring um, available to them as well, but all of our students have free tutoring available to them in any subject area. Um, the Writing Center at the Educational um, Resource Center is phenomenal. You walk in there with any paper for anything um, and they'll give you support. And I personally am also just really proud that our average um, GPA for our current BU athletes is about a 3.2, which is phenomenal. They are really doing so well in both um, their, their sport and and in and in the classroom so we're very proud of them um, but let's talk more about how we get started <laughs> thank you yeah of course so the best thing um, a prospective student athlete can do to get noticed by a coach is to really complete a sport specific questionnaire our questionnaires are posted on our athletics website um, I will give you the website after the end of this uh, presentation um, so if you you see our questionnaire um, on our website, you submit it to the, and the coach will receive the questionnaire. Uh, you can also follow up with an email about submitting the questionnaire. Um, but because of NCA rules, the coach uh, may not be able to reply right away to your email, depending on what, uh, what year you are in high school, um, which kind of brings me to our next slide. NCA recruiting. So for NCA recruiting, this is kind of, this is in my wheelhouse since I uh, I deal with a lot of NCA rules um, with being in the compliance office. So uh, for NCA recruiting, um, there are rules that are established by each gov division governing recruiting materials, whether it's letters, um, other written co correspondence. Uh, electronic communication, so either uh, submit, uh, submitting an email or text message, uh, telephone calls, off-campus contact, official visits, and unofficial visits. And so Division One has its own set of restrictions uh, for when a college coach can send, materi send materials, uh, communicate, whether again it's via email, text, and, or phone calls, when we can provide visits and have contact with prospective student athletes. Uh, the NCAA rules governing this, the means and times of recruit, timing of recruitment vary by sport. So we have rules for basketball versus ice hockey versus lacrosse and softball and versus all other sports. All these, all these, are, all these sports have different uh, means and timing of recruitment. Um, as I said, that they vary, really vary by, by sport. Um, in, uh, in most, uh, but not all sports, coaches really can, can't can contact you until after your sophomore year of high school. Um, and then and the other sports, uh, the contact window doesn't really begin until the, the, the fall of junior year. Um, so just really about every division one sport uh, operates on a different recruiting calendar. Um, and so within that recruiting calendar, there are, are periods of time when a coach can contact you so when they can make in-person off-campus visits to a recruit, um, evaluation periods when they can they can watch you play um, at a tournament, high school, club, um, AAU, all, all those non-scholastic uh, tournaments. Um, so that's when off-campus evaluations are allowed but no direct contact can be made. And then there's a quiet period when only an in in-person on-campus contact can be made and then a dead period when no recruiting contacts or evaluations are of any kind that can take place. And currently with COVID-19, we have been in a, in a dead period since uh, the since middle of March, uh, April. So, and we, we will be in division one team, division one schools will be in a dead period through January 1st because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide. So we're not ignoring you. We have to <laughs> just wait for a little bit. So stick yes. with us. <laughs> Coaches, uh, sorry, just to go back on that, coaches still can uh, communicate via phone um, and email. Again, if you are a contactable recruit, um, they can still do that during a dead period. They just can't uh, watch you um, in person uh, or have any visits on campus. Um, and then uh, processing through the uh, recruiting process, uh, the NCA Eligibility Center um, registration so if you do want to play sport and say sport, and particularly if you want to play at Boston University, 
you will need to register at the eligibility center. Um, eligibilitycenter.org is where you can where you can best uh, where you can sign up and register for the eligibility center. Um, and so, the, they really try to um, have you plan to register during your freshman year of high school. Um, and once you're registered, you will receive a list of tasks that that will be need need to be completed in order to receive the required uh, certification through the eligibility center. Uh, so those tasks should be completed by the deadlines, um, the prescribed deadlines to ensure that you are certified as eligible prior to enrolling at the university. And so to go off of that, to be eligible for practice, competition, financial aid, incoming freshmen must be certified by the NCA Eligibility Center, like I said, um, and this requirement applies to all student athletes, including those on scholarship and walk-ons. Uh, the Eligibility Center uh, certifies both the academic part and also the amateur status of prospects. Um, and then other, evalu other valuable information related to academic requirements uh, can be found on the NCA Eligibility Center website where you can review uh, the, the, the academic requirements for your initial eligibility. Um, I also recommend the NCA International Guide. Um, this is where you can find uh, credit values per course to ensure that you are on track towards the 16 credits needed to be eligible uh, to compete and to practice and to receive financial aid. Um, and also within there, you'll find approved courses for your province uh, in Canada. Um, and then uh, overall, just I just want to end um, my part. I know it's pretty quick, but um, I just want to kind of say, uh, you know, to learn more about our department and our programs, our facilities, you can go to our uh, website, goterriers.com. Um, that's where you'll find all of our programs, like I said, coaches, uh, the coaching staffs, um, and then uh, our facilities as well. So thank you. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Laura, for all of those details. Um, and, you know, we, I've learned a lot in just working on um, this presentation with you of, um, you know, kind of the additional steps for athletes. We know that um, because of these additional steps, it can be, um, you know, a little bit more complicated process. So we really want you to reach out to us. Like we are here to support you in every step of the way um, if you are, are interested in BU. So you have my email address here. Um, you have the Go Terriers website um, with Laura's contact information, with Laura's information there. Um, and as we mentioned, each one of, not only the, the questionnaires for your sport are available on goterriers.com. Actually, if you just Google Boston University Prospect um, Questionnaire will be like the first one that comes up. Um, so that's an easy way to find it. But also just Googling Boston University Athletic Staff Directory, you'll come up with the contact information for everyone in our athletics department, including the head coaches for your sport. Um, and so you um, you know, have the option of, of reaching out to them. Laura walked you through um, kind of what the the rules are that we need to follow of when we're responding to um you know going out and, and watching you play and whatnot but starting that process yourself and sending a little email to the coach right laura of just hey my name is i'm from you know ontario toronto um from british columbia i'm from nova scotia and i would love to play for your sport um i would love to row for bu or be on the swimming team or okay maybe be on the hockey team um and you really start that process of of what that looks like with bu just even a casual email it doesn't have to have links to fancy videos and everything like that um just getting that process started getting your you know toe in the water um can be a, a good initiation of this process um but then lean into us for any questions that that you have um, we have an abundance of other virtual programming available on our visitor website um, and really a lot of different ways for you to explore BU. So we have live uh, virtual campus tours now, so students will take you out on their, you know, 
videos um, on their stabilized uh, cameras, videoing camera uh, campus for you. Um, you're able to ask questions live. So that's a great way to, to get a good view of campus right now. There's a lot of recorded campus con uh, tours as well. Um, then there's informational sessions. So a member of the Board of Admissions like myself and current students um, giving you know, a similar presentation, but much more detail with a longer time allotted um, about all of our various programs. Um, there's programming specific to individual schools and colleges, specific to early decisions, specific to medicine um, and health sciences. Um, and if you just follow us on social media, you'll get um, kind of pop ups and reminders for when new events are added as well. So do stay in contact with us. Um, we would love to hear from you all. Um, but thank you so much for visiting with us this evening. We really appreciate um, the time that you've taken out um, to, to spend with us and learn more about Boston University. Uh, and we very much appreciate it.